Welcome to the second uh, in the series of screencasts on parameterizations. Having done some very elementary things, I'll now uh, proceed to speed up a little bit. The first thing I want to consider next is a stretching and compressing coordinate directions. So I will do this by, I'll start by assuming, let's assume that we have a parameterization of a curve. So R of T in two dimensions, so I have X of T, Y of T, and that that is a parameterization of some curve, which I will now draw. Draw it in bold here. Let's say it's that curve. Well, it was meant to be bold. Well, I have to select it anyway to copy. So let me make it a little bit bolder and let me make a copy of it. So this parameterization describes this curve. And what I want now consider is um, stretching. And I will just consider now the stretching in the x direction. The y direction will be similar. So I'll consider a new parameterization called R tilde of t, which will be given by a x of t, where a is a constant, y of t. What curve does this describe? Well, I can do this. I can just paste the previous curve. And if a is greater than 1, we'll have a curve. The curve will look like something like this. I'll discuss it more momentarily. And if a is less than 1, but positive, the curve will look like this. So I put these on here. So this is a is greater than 1, and this is a is less than 1, but positive. And uh, let's just see what we can understand here. Well, where this, where x is 0 in this curve, x is 0 here, x will be 0 in all of these curves, so 0 is the same. What does it say? All right, that's clear, I think. And where x is 1 in this parameterization, I will indicate that. Let's just pick, let's pick this minimum here. That'll be easy to follow. x is 1 there. Um, in this parameterization, x will be equal to a, so that will correspond to a, and a. So we can, we can manipulate parameterizations, or you can understand parameterizations in this way. If a were negative, of course, this curve would flip about the y-axis, um, but I, I don't have any way in the software to do that, and I won't try and do that here. And as I said, of course, we can, we can manipulate a y in the same, in the same way. Now, one of the most useful ways in which one sees this is the following, which I'll now turn to, an important curve, which is the ellipse. And the usual parameterization of the ellipse, the most common, let's say, is a cosine t comma b sine t. And I will go ahead now and give the interval of t. t is in naught to 2 pi. And this, this is important, so let's call it, this is an ellipse. So I will discuss it, but first let me, uh, let me draw some. So let's bring up these axes. Now you can see that if A is equal to B, this will become a circle of radius A, which is equal to B. And let's, for the moment, let's just go ahead and set that equal to 1, just to be, make it simple. And let's draw this, so let's draw a circle of radius 1. Oh no, that's not going to be centered very well. No, it's not too bad, but in any case I want to copy it, so. All right, let's copy it. This is meant to be a circle of radius 1. This would be the point x is equal to 1. This would be the point y is equal to 1. All right, I'm not going to label the axes x and y, that's clear. And now let's consider um, a not equal to b, and um, let's just put some on here. So let's make a bigger than 1, b less than 1, and this is what we get. And let me go ahead and do the other one. So you can do as you wish. I'll make here now b bigger than 1, a less than 1, and I get an ellipse like this. All right, and just, that's a is equal to b is equal to 1, so this would be both are positive, bigger than 0, less than 1, less than a. That's this case. And then I have the case a bigger than 0, but less than 1, and b is bigger than 1. So uh, you can see how um, this relates very clearly to this previous discussion. There's one more thing I want to do, which I had failed to do earlier, and I just want to go ahead and say now, is that, of course, there's the orientation of these curves given by this parameterization. I hadn't been including it before, but I ask you in your homework to include the arrows indicating orientation. So let me go ahead and put the, the arrows on there. All right, so these are, these are um, ellipses, and they're important curves. They're an example of what's called a conic section. If you're not familiar with conic sections, I invite you to read the uh, Wikipedia article 
Cohen coming sections. This curve, uh, ellipses together with circles, parabolas, hyperbolas, come about by intersecting a circular cone with a plane. I'll let you read about that. It's not so important for um, for what we will do here. What we do care about is the um, the algebraic aspect, which is that ellipses obey the equation x over a squared plus y over b squared equal 1. Or I should say that if a set of points x, y obey this equation, then they describe an ellipse. Not all ellipses uh, have this form. I'll let you read about that. But, uh, but curves that have this form, in fact, are ellipses. So let's circle that. And the point I want to make is you can see very easily that this parameterization, can I get them both on here? No, I can't. And we, you can see very easily that this parameterization satisfies this equation because x over a plus y over b, x over a squared is just cosine squared, y over b squared is just sine squared, so that's equal to 1. So I'm very simply I'm able to verify this equation. And let me just emphasize one final point about this, which is that if you wanted to describe these curves using y is equal to f of x, you could, in fact, solve for, for y in terms of x in this equation. You would have you would have to have two branches, say an upper branch and a lower branch, two functions. You get a plus or minus square root. You could do it, but it would be quite messy, whereas this description is quite easy and natural, and it gives us very easily the lengths of the what are called the semi-major and semi-minor axes. So this would be the semi-major and semi-minor axes of an ellipse. And again, if you're not familiar with those, let me just write those in here. Semi-major or semi-minor axes. Again, I'll let you I'll let you read about that. All right, so I think that's all I want to say, at least for the moment, about ellipses and this idea of, of stretching coordinates. And I will pause here and continue in the next uh, screencast.